Hey guys, John Faulkner here, Survival Dispatch, and today I am joined by our good buddy and insider writer, Nick Meacher. So, Nick and I decided to take our bags, dump them end over end. Sort of. And, uh, and just go through a lot of gear that could be used if you found yourself lost in the woods. So a lot of this can be found in our Survival Dispatch Insider issue that we did a, quite a few months ago, uh, mm -hmm. titled Lost in the Woods. But a lot of this is just gear, as you would say just now, it is used to do what? Find out where you are, communicate it to others, and then helping them find you when they get close. There you go. Uh, that's the technical term for being lost. So, um, you're so not, we have a you're not lost. You just don't know where you are. You just don't know where you are. Right. You know. So we have a lot of gear uh, spread out from low tech paper maps all the way up to satellite communicators. So um, let's just kind of start low tech. A low tech. You know, and this is all stuff that can be ranged from things you keep in your bag to things you keep in your car, to things that you keep at home. Uh, it can escalate to, to wherever you want it, but you should have some forms of these in multiple locations. Right. So, uh, you know, for the one day that you forget your get home bag, even though you say you carry it with you every single time, even though you don't nine out of 10 times, uh, you know, you have it in your car or it's in your car or your bag or, or wherever it might be. So, all right, let's start low tech. Low tech, maps. Maps, So come in different forms. Lots of different forms. You can find, like your local 7-Eleven might have a, um, a local street map or one of the uh, places I find good for maps is like the truck stops. Truck stops, pilots, loves. Pilots, loves, yep. um, uh, travel, travel centers, centers. etc. So those are always a good place to hit up for yep. maps. Um, That's where you get most of like these. This is a National Geographic one. You get the, what are the, Randalls? Ran Randall. 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 Is it yeah. Randall? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Look these around. are really good. You know, these, this National Geographic are the ones that I usually gravitate towards, keeps all city maps, um, but they're waterproof and tear resistant. They come on this nice film. So being in your bag or in your car, right. it's, it doesn't get ripped as easy. Um, so I prefer National Geographic ones. And then um, I've got the book ones in the car for uh, the state I live in. And then for this road trip, I bought a world one, a world one, US, world, US one. So it's got all the city maps in as well as, you know, interstate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, marking them up. So we talked about this a little bit earlier about marking up maps. Um, there's a couple of ways to do it. If you want to keep certain things not so conspicuous on your map, you can use UV pens yeah. um, and a UV light, and, and that way you know it's on there, but nobody else can see it. Uh, just don't keep the UV light in the same bag with the map. kind of gives away the secret. Um, compass. 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 Compass, yep. Um, lots of different types. We talk yep. in the article about different types and using them, so get yourself a decent compass. And as we just were talking about, setting the dec de declination. Declination. Uh, yeah, that yeah. word. <laughs> um, for where you live. Um, Matt, I have a compass in my watch. So I, yeah. that's the reason I bought this watch. And uh, I have a compass in mine as well, in um, my Sunto. So, you know, the modern, a lot of those watches nowadays, your, your, your smart watch. Yep. Um, this one's not a smart watch. But the advantage with this one, it's solar. Is that, is that other this solar? This one's not solar. So that's solar. Nope. So that was one of the, when I looked at, when we were writing that article, the advantages of this one versus that one. That one's got to be recharged. This one's solar. It's always going to work, um, in theory. Um, so, you know, things to think about when you buy plus the cost difference. I mean, these now, these, when I bought this, it was a few hundred bucks. Now they're less than a hundred bucks. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And, and there's things too. You can get like a Sunto Clipper. Uh, small, small compass that are, are fairly, are, they're very accurate. Um, that can go on the side of your watch yep. and, you know, you can, you can add that for redundancy as well. Um, but, you know, compass is definitely something that, that goes well with a map um, and... Not easy to use without a map. Yeah. So, so they kind of go together. So, so yeah, definitely go together. Um, where do you want to keep going? Uh, let's, while we're on maps, let's talk about maps on your phone, right? Yeah. So everybody uses one of a number of different uh, apps on their phone for navigation, whether it's uh, the one that comes on the iPhone, generic, or Google Maps, or something you have on your phone. And a lot of people use that for day-to-day -day direction location. Yep. There are apps that you can get where you can actually download the map and it's stored on your phone. So if you go somewhere where there's no cell service, you still have a map. Um, so that's useful, um, especially if you are hiking in the woods and things like that. A lot of places still don't have cell phone coverage. Um, Lost in the Desert, you know, an article coming up, uh, a magazine coming up in a couple of months. Um, 
actually talking about exactly that yep. um, in the article that I'm writing. So having downloadable maps if you're going to rely on your phone. If you're going to rely on your phone, better make sure you've got the means to charge it. So if you are hiking, you need to have a solar panel and the cable so you can keep your phone charged because once it's dead, you're lost you're in the woods. Lost. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, I would say even, even you know, after that, uh, a headlamp or a flashlight yep. can definitely be used not only to, to keep you going, you know, if you need to at night, but it can also signal for people. Um, right. So that can be a huge thing. So always make sure you have a light source that's bright enough. Um, you know, I just kind of have two examples here with a, a, a Petzl headlamp. I couldn't think of the name there for a second. A Petzl headlamp and a Surefire stiletto, you know, which I Yeah, and I've got um, one I always carry in my pocket. I've had this thing for years. This actually is uh, a 511. 511. Yeah. And I've got its baby version. But again, you got to remember what batteries it uses. And this one uses the, the CR123, mm -hmm. so not common. You can't just like go to most stores and buy. Um, so I always keep spares. Um, I have a smaller version that runs on a AA for quite some time too. Um, so I always got that with me. And then my bag's got a headlamp. Headlamps, can't underestimate those because it allows you hands free. And if you're trying to navigate, it's just super helpful. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about flashlights and kind of signaling your care location, we've talked about these before. This is um, uh, what they call personal strobe. Yep. Um, perfect uh, for like you know signaling where you are. And this one is nice because it also got a steady light. But uh, you know obviously you're going to use up your battery with that. Yeah. I carry an IR. Uh, if it comes to a, a, a dire situation, you know most uh, air rescue nowadays, especially, uh, have night vision. And things like that. So this is an IR strobe, extremely small and compact. And, and as you can see, uh, this comes out of my this. I, I just had my my get home bag with me. So it, everything is really scaled right. down to make it as weight compatible as possible. Uh, but this just takes a single CR123. All you got to do is flip the battery over. This is made by a company called Phoenix. Uh, it's the Phoenix. Firefly? No, nah, it's the CR123 Junior or something like that is, is the title of it. But you literally just flip the battery around and it'll start strobing. Um, and, and this thing can be seen from like ungodly distance. Yeah, when, when I lived in Alaska and, and uh, we did some stuff with search and rescue, the uh, Coast Guard pilot said with night vision, um, they can see a regular strobe to the point of almost over the horizon with their night vision gear. Um, and so that's important with the night vision. If they're using night vision, you know they get close with with a with a strobe like this. Now these are new ones. They run on LED. Yeah. Um, this is one of the older ones, the, the old military one, um, which has the IR cover, yep. which is nice, yep. um, but also has the regular strobe. And with these regular strobes with night vision gear, when they get close, that that flares the the night vision yep. gear. So that's not. Um, as nice, and then you again, if you flick it IR mode, um, that's that's useful to them too. So. Yeah, so I mean, having having a way to signal from a distance is a huge a huge gain, and you know, and as you can see, you can kind of scale up or scale down based on on what you're wanting to put it. If I was going to have a car kit, right, I can carry heavier stuff, exactly. bigger stuff that that has a little bit more capability. Talking about something you're putting on your back, it's going to become a lot lighter, a lot right. smaller. Um, so you know, the the dividing line here. You know, right. is is really what you know. Nick Nick brought some bigger stuff out just to to be able to handle that, and I brought some smaller stuff out just to kind of give you guys a reference of, of what there are out right. there. And and you know, in my car, all this stuff's in my car, and and if I have to go to the get home bag, then you know, then I'm making a decision depending on circumstances what I'm taking out, mm -hmm. which is why I went to modular packages. Of, you know, this signal yep. complete signal kit, great for the car, great if I'm stuck somewhere in the middle of nowhere, but if I'm abandoning the car. Um, I'm not carrying this, you know, it, yeah. what do they say, ounces lead to pounds and pounds lead to, to pain. back pain, yeah. So, you know, doesn't go anywhere. Um, while we're still talking low tech yeah. stuff, whistle. Yeah, I got um, a whistle as well. So, th these are so useful for people, especially if you're lost in a wilderness area. Yep. You can attract them fairly close with some of this stuff that we've, we've used, but when you've got a ground team searching for you, one of these uh, is worth their weight in gold. Um, it can be heard a long way off. Um, if you've got kids, you know, this one's got a little clippy thing on it, clip it onto whatever they're wearing. Um, really, you can pick these up for a few dollars. The British call them clippy things. Clippy we things. call them carabiners. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> one thing with a whistle. Carbiners. Uh, one thing with a whistle is, you know, if, if, if it's something where you've been lost for a day or so, uh, and you haven't had water or anything, you, you might not have a voice. So if you just always think like, oh, they'll just hear me yelling. Or if you've been yelling for five minutes and they haven't completely triangulated where you might be, your voice just might be gone from that point where it takes very little effort to blow a whistle. Right. Um, so, so that's why whistles, I, I think, are beyond invaluable when it beyond valuable when it comes to a signal kit right. um, this is a little signal kit that I've had for a while uh, the company is no longer in business so don't try to look it up we've had quite a few people email us and stuff about you it you should market that I know um, but it has like the whistle you saw it has a signal panel in it has a solace uh, panel in it has an IR panel has a signal mirror uh, and then I also have some Kim lights in the back. So day or night, this thing pretty much covers it. Um, and then I clip the strobe on it as well. So this is something I've had in my bag. I have a couple of these and, uh, and I've had them for, for years, but this is my kind of low tech. Um, I mean, besides this, nothing takes a battery and I can signal day or night um, with it. So, so that's something that I've, that I've had with me for quite a while. And, and Nick pretty much has all the same items, just right. in a bigger format. So like Paul, your signal panel. So the, big, the signal panel is one of the bigger ones. Yeah. And, and, you know, I attach cord to it so you can just hang it up. Yep. Um, you know, that way you can leave it and it's blowing and flapping, makes a lot of, attracts a lot of attention. Bigger signal mirror, and I've had this one um, uh, more than 10 years. Uh, I know that because I had it when I was in Alaska. So and, and here's a good step: keep it in a Ziploc bag. It'll keep it from getting marred and scratched, so yep. that it's still shiny when shiny. you need it. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, different environments. And you know, when you're looking at putting some gear together, I would suggest low and high tech because again, you know, you need a battery. So strobe, no matter what, even one of these, this uses a regular uh, AA battery or I carry lithiums in the bag with it to swap out. Um, if regular playing around, I just put rechargeables in it, but they're gonna run out at some point. Yeah. And, um, you know, the last thing you need is, is especially a locating device that pinpoints where you are as opposed to some other stuff we're gonna talk about in a minute. You don't want them running out of batteries or not having something else that can function in its same mode. Yeah. Um, great for nighttime use, maybe not as effective during the day. During the day, your signal panel is going to be more effective. Um, signal mirror, again, is for like target, targeting something you mm -hmm. see or hear, uh, although you can tie it up, tie it in a, in a tree with a piece of string, let the wind blow it around, and, and it'll, it'll attract attention if nothing else. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you're talking, you know, still in the low-tech end, um, I carry a road flare in my bag. This is an Orion one. Uh, you can get these on Amazon. We'll leave links below. Um, number one, if I had to, in a dire situation, this thing will get a fire started with the wettest of wood. Uh, it burns extremely hot at night. It's fantastic for mm -hmm. signaling. Uh, if you were to have, you know, issues with your car, you know, and pulled off the side of the road even, you could use a road flare. So it has multiple use. That's why it always goes in my bag. Uh, I prefer the bigger ones. They do make smaller ones. Uh, they don't weigh much, so I usually just go with, with a bigger one uh, just because it has a longer burn time. But fantastic way of, of getting somebody's attention. Um, these things are almost like blinding bright. Right. If, you've never, if you've never cracked one uh, and struck it, uh, it, it, like it's hard to hold in your hand, in front of your face, it's, right. it's so bright. So uh, fantastic, you know, for, for signaling people. Um, and they make battery versions of those now. Yeah. Um, which is, I have a set in my car. Um, they're just a little flat, like, like hockey pucks. Yeah. Um, and so for areas where it is dry and you don't want to start a wildfire, those are the things that um, go to it. And the nice thing of that is it's a little stack, little tube like this, and I think there's six of them in mm -hmm. there. So I can use one, and when that battery dies, use the other. Um, you did mention about how bright those are, and with any, if you're at night, with any light device, you don't want it in front of you. You don't want to destroy your yep. night vision, so be careful where you place stuff. Anything else low-tech you got in the bag? Uh, no, I think we've covered that stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're into, right. into high-techy stuff let's, now. Let's move into to, More to expensive tech. toys, yeah. right? But, yeah. you know, and it's one of those things where uh, always make things fit your budget, you know, and high-tech, high-tech, can be expensive, but it also has its place with regards to um, 
options and features that it has over low tech right. stuff. Right, and I think it's important to mention is that we didn't just go go out and buy this at one time. Yeah, this is stuff years and years. Uh, that we've accumulated over over years, and and some of it I bought because I'm writing articles. I'm, oh, that's cool. I'll buy one. And as uh, we were talking earlier and joking, joking earlier, it's like yeah. Yeah, well, we're paying you. Yeah, but I'm buying more stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, w am I winning on this one? But you know, it's the same thing. So, um, let's on start, let's start with radios. Radios. So my radio is sitting on the floor over there. I just forgot to grab yeah. it. Yeah, we talked. Table. We've done some videos on radios. Yeah. Uh, so if you're in, this is a ham radio. Um, most of the ham radios will receive outside the ham bands, so you can at least listen to find out on if you know the area you're in and do some research beforehand, what kind of channels the search and rescue folks use. You might be able to listen to it, get an idea of what's going on. Of course, that can be bad if you hear that they're not searching where you are, but um, you know that's the risk you take. Um, if you're in range of ham radio repeaters, that's going to get you some help pretty quick because most repeaters, you know, there's always people listening. Uh, some repeaters have a function on called long tone zero. Uh, it's usually listed as LITZ, which means if you hold the zero down for more than five seconds and that repeater's got it enabled, it automatically calls 911. So, um, Say that one more time. Long tone zero, LITZ is usually the acronym listed after it. And you hold the zero down for five seconds or more. And if it's there's something that's on that repeater, the repeater's programmed to call 911. There you go. So. So, that. Yeah, you learned something new today. You learned something new. I know. I figured you'd teach Get a ham license. One thing. Um, Gosh. So, again, do some research where you're going. Make sure you've got that stuff yeah. programmed in there. Absolutely. Have a cheat sheet so you can manually program your radio. This one's programmed out for this road trip. It's got some Florida stuff in it for around here, um, and plus some other stuff. Um, you can do the same thing with the cheaper radios, the BTEX, and things like that. But most radios are not water friendly. So if you're carrying it and you are like in the woods or going somewhere, uh, depending on where you live, um, you know, if you're in Arizona, it doesn't, does it ever rain in Arizona? A little bit, but okay. not much. You know, you're, you might be fine, yep. but if you're here in Florida, you know, you set your watch two o'clock, better put it in a Ziploc bag because it's going to rain. Um, so, you know, appropriately protect your equipment, especially your electronics. Um, bear in mind that you have limited battery life, so you know listen more than you talk. Um, you know you can only carry so many batteries, and they you know they're not light, so yeah. you know it's adding up weight. Better antenna, and we talked about that in another video. So radios can get you help. What we don't have here is a satellite phone. Um, so let's we got one to, satellite so communicator. So let's yeah. So let's talk about the GPS stuff, and then yeah, we'll mention the absolutely. phones. Um, yeah, I mean, GPS, uh, I carry a Garmin uh, eTrex 30, just because it's small. Uh, doesn't have a ton of features, doesn't have touchscreen or anything, um, but it's one of those, I wanted something, once again, smaller, lighter, uh, less expensive over, over like your 64 right. there. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of the features with regards to touchscreens and things like that. So you has got a kind of old school jog wheel. Um, but definitely, you know, a GPS will show you where you are and where you hopefully want to get to. Right. So um, I bought this one about five years ago. I did some research and they, they rated it as the, one of the top ones. So this is the Garmin 64 ST. Um, nice thing with all your electronics, if you have the ability to put a lanyard on it or a mm -hmm. carabiner, clippy thingy, um, do so. You want to clip it to your gear because you yep. really don't want to drop it while you're, you're you know going through brush and trees and things. Um, you need to understand how these work, what map reference you're using. There's different formats um, that they can use. You can use the military um, format, which I just forgot the acronym for. You can use regular latitude, longitude. Uh, so most of your maps will work with that military format. They're more accurate. They're easier to use than Latin long. But if you transmit that to somebody, somebody's got to know what you're talking about. What you're talking about to convert it to Latin long, which most of your uh, rescue agencies use, but they'll they'll know they'll know the format. So knowing where you are, um, you can use these to track your way in. So if you have to backtrack, if you set it up beforehand, you can actually backtrack with these. Can you do that with that one yep. as well? Yeah. So backtracking is an option. Um, you know that features like that. This one's this is Nikki's. This is the, the Oregon Oregon six hundred. Yeah. Um, one, and I think that's touchscreen? Yep. Yeah, that's touchscreen because there's no buttons yep, anymore. Yeah, 100% touchscreen right. on that This one. one's not touchscreen. Um, 
and, and it works well. Uh, but again, it's just electronic. Uh -huh. it, this one's actually pretty water friendly. I think most of the GPS backpacking yeah. type GPS units are water. They're definitely water resistant. Yeah, uh, stand up to some pretty much. Yeah, and, and the good thing about a lot of Garmin's, sorry, I, I, I'm a Garmin fanboy. I just, I think, all they, these days. I think they make, make the best stuff. But they also have the accessibility with regards to being able to upload maps right. of the area you're going into. You can upload topo maps, you can upload trail maps. Road maps. All, road maps, all kinds yeah. of stuff. And, and you, so, get a, you get an unlimited subscription these days once you buy them. Yeah. And so um, I pretty much every month will plug this in and, and the app on the computer will tell me whether there's any updates to the software, firmware for yep. the thing, device, as well as maps. Um, if you are a hunter, you can download the, um, I don't know what it is in Florida, but in Colorado, um, there are, they have a different numbering system for the zones where you can hunt and you get your permit for. Yep. So you can download those maps to make sure you're in the right area because it's expensive. Because if you're not, it's... You get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, yeah, satellite image views, um, like you said, topo views. I mean, these things these days are... But you need to understand how to use it. And I actually went to a class they offered, um, I think it was only one day, but it was, it was pretty into, uh, informative in to actually learning how to use this thing. Um, Garmin also has, what do they call that program? I think it's called Homebase. Uh, it's a program that interacts with most of their devices where you can actually go on it. Um, you can download what you've done or you, vice versa, you can map yep. out waypoints, um, which is something that your typical phone won't allow you to do. You put an address in, it's going to give you the most direct route. Tell you how to get there. That's right. It. And if you want to go different routes, like when I was traveling here from Pennsylvania, I didn't want to come down 95 and around DC. I'm smart enough to know that that's not where you want to be, um, you know, just because of traffic. So I had to choose a different route and I had to program my car GPS, go to this city. And then when I got close, programmed to another city in like three steps or four steps until I could put the address in. Um, then it would, you know, otherwise I was going roads I don't want to. So that's, that's where you have to recognize, depending on what you're using, as to where it's going to send you, how it's going to send yeah. you, um, if you're using your car GPS. And then, I mean, one step up from that is satellite communicators. Satellite communicators. So we did an article recently, and I can't remember which magazine it was in, where, we, where I talked about the, the GPS, uh, the satellite communicators versus... GPS versus satellite phones and the personal locator beacons. Yeah. So talk to that one. Yeah, so this is the Garmin InReach Mini. And this came out uh, end, end of 2018, middle end of 2018. Um, Garmin, I think, bought out, um, was it Magellan? I think it's Magellan. Yeah. Anyways, the, the, the InReach company, they had InReach devices. So now they're offering it as the InReach Mini, which is this little guy right here. And then they have a couple of their new uh, larger based on, units. Based on this, Yeah, that actually. have satellite yep. communicator built into it. Uh, what the great thing about this is this is pretty much just a transmitter and receiver. That's all it is. Uh, it'll tell me how many miles I've gone um, there and back. Uh, it can give me a, a URL link so I can put it like on Facebook or I can send it to Nick and Nick could track me on his computer. Um, but all this does is translate, translate, transfer and receive information. That's right. it from a satellite. Uh, the screen on it's very really small, it's black and white, doesn't do anything. But what it does is it pairs with your phone uh, over Bluetooth. And what that does is I can pull up the Garmin app in my phone or Earthlink and I have a full-fledged Garmin unit at that point. And the great part about it is iPhone interface is just better than a Garmin interface. It's faster, it's smoother, it's in more detail. I can have topo maps, satellite maps, trail maps, road maps, you name it, all on my iPhone. We, I have my phone with me all the time anyways. Uh, yes, it's two devices. I've never had an issue with pairing them. I've never had an issue with uh, them working together. And, and the reason why I bought this is because we go out a lot. We go out into the woods, we go out onto the trail when we're shooting videos. Um, and cell phone service is just spotty at best. And with this, you're able to, to do two things. Uh, number one, I can send text messages from my phone. Anybody that's in my contact list, I can pull up Nick's phone number and I can shoot him a text message and it'll come from a different number, but he knows it's me. I'll tell him, hey, this is my Garmin inReach number. It'll come straight to him and I can tell him, hey, we made it to the campsite. Hey, we're fine. Um, if he's showing up the day after, I might, you know, hey, 
bring this with you, but I can communicate with him even if I don't have cell phone service. Uh, the other thing that this has on it is an SOS button. Under this cover here, hold down the SOS button and that will reach MERS. It, well, so uh, or it a, goes to a commercial. Correct. So this is the big difference between these devices and the personal locator beacons yep. is that it goes to a commercial uh, through the commercial satellite system. So if I remember correctly, these run off the Iridium yes. the satellite system. Yes. So it's commercial. So it goes to their ground station who then find out the local uh, authority, authority yep. 911, search and rescue, and then route that information to them. So it's all it's sending. It's sending your location, um, but with the uh, device on your, with the app on yep. your phone, you can actually send a message. Yep. So a friend of mine um, has one and goes um, like elk hunting and what have you. And uh, I think it was last year, or maybe not so many months ago, um, one of his party had a heart attack and they coordinated getting uh, search and rescue in using, using that device. Um, so now you have to have a subscription. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And a subscription runs from like 20 bucks up to $80 a month. Right. Uh, I, I tell everybody, unless you are just constantly wanting to s always send messages because you're always out of cell phone service, just get the $20 option. Right. Uh, it gives you X amount of uh, text messages, which is fine. I think it's like 10 or 20. Um, and then after that, there's a charge right. per text message. But you're not going to give that number out to everybody. Correct. You're going but to it's tell also, them, hey, this is just for an emergency. But it's also one of those things where if it's a life-threatening situation, right. I don't care if the text message costs me 100 bucks. Right. Yeah, and, one and text message. he turns his on and off, the subscription yep. on and off as needed. So it's not like you're paying it every yep. month, even if the thing's sitting in your bag. And I know a, um, um, so back in Colorado, Colorado 4x4 Rescue, which is a volunteer organization that go out and help people that get stuck off uh, trails. And um, one of the guys has one of these yep. and it works where obviously we don't have ham radio and, and the APRS stuff doesn't work. And he was uh, using that recently on a complex search that took him about, or not search, but recovery that took about six, eight yep. hours to get these vehicles unstuck. Yeah, and, and I've just found this, that we've utilized this thing so much. Once again, I put a carabiner on it. And what I do is, is when we go out, I just attach it to uh, the strap, the shoulder strap on my backpack. So it just hangs, you know, it kind of hangs like right there. Um, and I do this for two reasons. Number one, uh, this little snub right here, it's called an antenna. And uh, on a satellite phone or a satellite communicator, this has to be able to see the big blue sky or else it's pretty much not gonna work. Right. If you're under a heavy tree canopy, eh, I've gotten it to go out a couple of times. Right. But usually you gotta get so much. So when you watch movies and the special force guy inside sure. the building pulls out his sat phone, <laughs> it's a movie. It There's doesn't movie. work that way. Right. You gotta go out into the clearing. So I always tell people to try to get to the highest, uh, clearest, clearest place that you can see the sky. That's when these are gonna work the best. And they take a couple minutes to translate. I right. mean, you are sending a signal from your phone to outer space and back. So, right. so it takes a while. Um, but I think the Garmin InReach Mini is worth every single penny. If you're a guy that, you know, or gal that goes out a ton, loves enjoying the outdoors, has family members, you know, uh, the ability for me to let my wife know that everything's okay um, is, is awesome. Right. And, and, you know, in the article we talked about even, you know, if you're somewhere in one of these states where they get severe winter storms and yep. you're miles from nowhere, like Wyoming, Montana, those kind of places. I know even my, my trek over through Kansas and, and what have you, there were places there was no cell phone coverage. And I knew because my Pandora app suddenly said, oh, we're switching to your saved downloaded station because there's no cell phone coverage. And so there are, you know, we are so used to picking up the cell phone and using it for everything yeah. that people forget that there are places that do not have cell phone coverage or or just a couple of bars and, of coverage. And and talking about, you know, severe weather during Hurricane Michael that went through uh, Panama City here in Florida last year, um, there was no cell phone tower or service for probably 50 to 75 miles in a town that you could not get out of. Right. All the roads were undrivable um, and, and just zero communication. And people just don't have landlines anymore. Right. And, so, and we were talking about that over lunch, that, that if you're in an area that's prone to tornadoes, hurricanes, those are probably the two biggie ones. Earthquakes, uh, even an, earth, knock down even, towers. even an yeah. earthquake, right? You get an outage of something like that and, and you don't have anything else. So these devices are still gonna work. Yep. If a hurricane comes through and all the street signs are gone, 
um, it's the GPS is still going to tell you where you are yep. and and. You know, if you put a street at this one, you can put a street address in. It's still going to tell you how to get there, even if there are no street signs. And yep. that was something they found. I can't remember which hurricane, but it was a big comment in the after action that they had rescuers coming in that didn't know the area, but they didn't know where to send them to. Right. All right. And and so last you can't year, can't say go to the 7-Eleven. The 7-Eleven's gone. gone. Right. We're underwater. All you mm -hmm. can see maybe is the roof. Um, so and then the Cajun Navy, right? They they did a lot of rescues in Louisiana mm -hmm. and places like that that got flooded last year, and that's how a lot of this was done by GPS coordinates because somebody would say I'm at such and such an address, so somebody would then have to convert that address to to uh, coordinates yeah. to be able to give to somebody to to go. One of the other things that with these devices, so this one's purely satellite. So as you can see, I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Um, this is the screen that tells you the satellites. So it's still trying to acquire. It does not work inside. It's got to see big blue sky. But in addition to downloading satellites, that's also communicating with the Iridium, the commercial satellite system. So, um, you know, it, it, it needs both yeah. in, that, in that particular case. Um, it's worth mentioning that people to understand there's two main satellite systems out there for GPS. One's the American system, one's the Russian system. And most of these devices will use both. Um, I don't know of anything that doesn't these days use both Russian and GPS. So they're accurate to about nine feet. Most mm -hmm. of them will tell you their accuracy and also accurate to about nine feet, which is good enough to find you. Yeah, and, and you know, and it's just one of the things, that's why you start looking at it, you go from a, a you know, a four dollar compass to a six, seven, eight hundred dollar GPS and right. kind of everything in between. And and it kind of takes things in between. There is not one uh, one platform that rules them all. No. It depends on the situation. Yep. I mean, if you're lost in the woods, um, a map isn't going to help you if you can't see uh, landmarks to figure out where on the map you are. You go, I'm somewhere on this map. Well, that doesn't help. So you've got to be able to see. And if you're in tree canopy, you have no, you've got nothing to get a bearing from. Um, again, you know, that's where the GPS comes in handy. Um, if you've just got lost and can't find your way out because you didn't mark your trail on the way in, you can use the device to backtrack. Um, the one thing that, the two things that we don't have here, so satellite phones, um, yeah. you know, and if you're going somewhere, you, you can, there are lots of places now, I didn't realize this until I did research the article, but you can actually rent a satellite phone. So if you're going somewhere um, that doesn't have, you know, reliable cell service or uh, something like that, you might want to consider renting a phone. They weren't that expensive yeah. on, in the scale of things. Um, if you're taking a GPS device, make sure you've downloaded the maps for where you're going. Um, typically, the, the packages you get all the U.S. Yep. But if you're going to somewhere else, you need to download that country. I, you know, go back to England occasionally, and so I have to make sure I download the the English maps because roads have changed so much around there that you know trying to navigate is like. Um, so satellite phone, same thing. You know, you're paying for the per call. Um, it's important to note that satellite phones. I actually typically will come with at least two cell phone, no, two numbers. Um, and, and this is more important if you're in emergency services to understand, but also if the telephone system is down. It can't reach a landline phone if the cell towers are gone and there's, or regular landline phone if all that infrastructure is gone. Um, and so cell phones also have uh, an ability to call another cell phone without going into the ground network. So. You need to have those numbers of, of folks in it so that you have those different numbers. If your cell phone dies, and yep. most people these days can't remember a cell phone. I can't tell you my kids' phone numbers. Yeah, no, you know, no. Like, back in 1999, boy, we could rattle right. off 40 or 50 oh, absolutely. numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. And the only number I've got in my head is, you know, work number and my mom's number. Because uh -huh. that number's never changed since I was, like, knee-high to a grasshopper. So that's an English expression. Okay. Is it your mom or your knee mom? Mom. Mom. M-U-M. Yeah. M -U -M. yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So, you know, those are important. You know, I have a card. I carry a card in my wallet that's got important phone numbers on it for, um, you know, my kids and, and uh, emergency contact information. So the other thing that we don't have, and, and, you know, in the article we talked about, one of those versus a personal locator beacon. So um, ACR, the company that makes these strobes, are probably one of the, just like Garmin, yeah. the people that make uh, personal locator beacons. And there's three different types one is the personal locator beacon. One's designed for boats and the other's designed for aircraft. But they all function essentially the same. Um, 
It's just how they're activated is different. And so the advantage of one of those is it's a one-time fee. Right? Yeah. You buy the device. It comes with a card. You go online. You register your information. You can provide um, contacts, emergency contacts. You can store your, uh, any medical emergency uh, information you want to there. And uh, when it's activated, it, it goes on a different satellite system. So it's not using the commercial like the uh -huh. Iridium. Um, it's, a, uh, it's called Copus Sarsat, which is a, a conglomeration of satellites in um, high Earth orbit, geostationary orbit over the poles, and low Earth orbit and middle Earth orbit. So there are three different altitudes that they orbit the Earth, some fixed, some otherwise. And so they provide 100, almost 100% 100 coverage of the entire world, whereas Iridium does have limitations, as does the other commercial system, but Iridium has less. Um, and the, the way it works is that the device has GPS, and it will try, when you activate it, it transmits the code of the device and your coordinates to those systems. They relay it to one of about 30 different rescue centers, and then they coordinate uh, the rescue efforts for that. The disadvantage is it just says you have an emergency. That, that's all it says. Um, send help. Now. Uh, now. Send help now. And, and it's treated that way. So if you're in, you know, if it's, uh, the one, I, the one um, situation I think of is there, there was somebody in, I think it was Wyoming or Montana, in the middle of winter, slid off the road um, into a ditch and wasn't found for a number of days. Um, there was been two similar ones. One had a good outcome, one had a bad outcome. And so something like this in the vehicle, you yep. know, is, is going to work. Um, whereas maybe one of, the, one of those may not work depending on the area. Plus, you know, that now the SOS feature will work whether or not you have the subscription. Correct. But it's the same thing. It's just sending send help send now. Send help. Um, so, you know, again, you, you need to think of your situation. What, yep. How often am I going to need it? Do I want the ability for somebody else to, you know, because you can set that up to ping everybody, like somebody every 15 minutes or yes. something like that. Yes, you can get it down to like every 30 Min seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, and so I know, really track, yeah. I think I read somewhere that, that uh, they've been using these uh, doing um, Mount Everest. Yes. Um, you know, to communicate with folks where they are. Um, and so they, that's an advantage. If you want somebody to know where you are all the time and all of a sudden you drop off the edge of the world, which if you fall off Mount Everest, that's pretty much it. They have an idea of where you were, whereas this requires one of these type things requires you to activate it. Um, and and so, some of these are pretty cool. Like this is a water one here. Yeah. So when these diodes get wet on the side, yeah, it activates. So so, so this one's just the strobe, but yeah. the PLBs they make them that are water activated. Um, and so yeah, there are that kind. You know, if you get into water, um, they're the kind you find on life vests. Mm -hmm. They're water activated batteries. Um, you know, uh, so. Uh, useful if you're boating. If you're a boater, you know, you want to be wearing one of these things. There's, you know, people have jumped in water and there's one tragic one just recently. And um, water's not very forgiving when you try to rescue somebody. And so yeah. um, handy to have one of those so, so somebody yeah. can find you. So, I mean, guys, that's, you know, a, a uh, smorgasbord of, of yeah. gear that we've laid out here. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where you guys can really see the differences between things, what they do, what they're good at, what they're not good at, um, and then make a judgment based on what you think you need to carry uh, in your system. So if you have any other questions with regards to, to gear, with re uh, getting found or getting, you know, getting unlost. Getting unlost. Getting unlost. Uh, feel free to leave those comments below. Make sure you hit the like button. Check out Survival Dispatch Insider at insider.survivaldispatch.com if you're wanting even more information on a monthly basis. And until next time, be safe.